The first mistake that you notice is that the format is slightly different. I'm using an old template. I'll get my knuckles wrapped for that. Components theme. It involves six universities, uh, and we have now a team of 20 researchers and academics working on what I'm briefly going to overview this afternoon. So the components elements, if you like, are the, are the central building blocks that you grow into a power converter, you grow into an integrated drive, and clearly what feeds into components are uh, the semiconductor devices that Phil Morby talked about this morning. In putting together the proposal, we thought of four objectives. And it's really, it's really about enabling new power semiconductors. We've got new devices on the, coming, coming on the radar, wide band gap devices. And we really want to do the engineering of them so that you can use them in the most efficient and effective way. So we need, for example, higher temperature packaging to be compatible. We need to understand the implications of a fast switching capability of these new devices in terms of EMI, in terms of their effect on other components. We need to understand how to drive these uh, new devices with efficient gate drivers. Also, we want to look at understanding or taking forward uh, the more reliable switch unit, both through design and through monitoring and prognosis. So really that, that, this diagram tries to capture the work we're trying to do within the components theme. And it's a very interdisciplinary activity. Uh, you'll see from this slide that we uh, broke it down into effectively five work packages. Three of those work packages, if you like, look at technologies. And the other two work packages feed into the cross-theme ideas of design tools and modeling at a component level and operation management control, again, at a component level feeding that into a bigger system. So what I'm going to do is they rattle through the various, these five work packages, if you like, with some slides that my colleagues have provided for me. So I might talk a lot of rubbish, but I'm sure they'll interject when I do. Uh, I think what this slide says, first of all, it says, says wire bonding is a bad thing. Let's get rid of it. So let's look at new technologies to eliminate wire bonding through various flexible packaging technologies. Also, another bad thing is the incompatibility of the thermal expansion of the actual power semiconductor devices and the substrates and the packages of which they're mounted. So we have problems there, that, that they have different thermal coefficients, CTEs, and also some of the established substrates tend to, although they perform very well electrically, could perform better thermally and mechanically. So this is really what this particular work package is about, looking at exploring novel ways of uh, improving those two problems posed. So the first work that's been going on has been looking at the use of carbon fi fiber reinforced composites as a form of uh, laminate packaging material. And the great thing about them is, is it has better thermal behavior, more compatible thermal behavior. So there's been considerable work going on about on simulating performance and testing at a sample level. Lots of results here, but here's a look at this curve, for example. If you compare the black one, which is a new carbon composite laminate, with perhaps a more conventional technology, which is, yeah, which is the red one. And what this axis shows you is a creep strain accumulation, i.e. the stress is being developed within the package. And so clearly the, the new technologies look promising in that regard of giving higher performance for the overall package device. Taking this forward, the work is going to look at reliability evaluated prototype flex soldered methods and sintered power modules, exploring the technologies to develop insulation substrates, fuse processing, such as flip chip bonding, investigation of new inter interconnect arrangements, and that's an interdisciplinary team working with colleagues in the converters theme, which we'll hear about later today, and fabrication of planar modules of planar inter interconnects. 
The second element of the technologies we're looking at are passive components. And here are two real drivers. One, which is very clear from this little breakdown here that Andrew in Manchester did for us. But if you look at a typical high power DC to DC converter, 48% of the weight of that component is in the magnetic devices. Now clearly that's a problem if you want to fly this in an aircraft. It might be a problem if you want to drive it around in a car as well, but particularly it's a problem if you want to fly it in an aircraft. And so getting techniques down, tools and methods, materials, improving the design of passive components, particularly wound components, is a major driver to get that down. Halving the weight will save a, a, lot, of, a lot of overall system weight. So the challenges we're addressing with these things are two, two challenges. High power density magnetic device with an emphasis on DC to DC converters. Uh, reduction uh, looking at ways of mitigating the air gap effects, ways of improving the thermal management, which I'll come on to in a minute. minute. Now the other one is, as I mentioned earlier, if you've got these wonderful new devices that switch like the clappers, if that's an appropriate phrase, What's it going to do to the poor thing that's sitting on the end of it, i.e. the wound component, the ele electrical machine winding, as we heard from Barry this morning, or, or the filter, filter inductor come capacitor? It's going to, going to severely stress them, perhaps. And clearly there's a trade-off then between what the system sees and how the system behaves, both in terms of the additional stress of these components and the EMI uh, pr uh, production, and the benefit of obviously very fast switching, low losses, smaller heat sinks, et cetera, for the, for the actual power semiconductor device. And really that's what we're trying to, trying to address in this particular subwork package, is really looking at the impact of high DV by DT on the behavior of wound components. And again, moving forward to try and develop a, a design methodology to encompass these problems and issues. So here's some results on the work Manchester we're looking at in terms of uh, improving the thermal management of a wound component. And to, and to put it in a nutshell, if you've got a core with an air gap, you get nasty fringes, fringing fluxes around the air gap. Those fringing fluxes have two problems. They cause the localised heating and lamination, but also in any conductors sitting around there. You can mitigate that for various, various means, but one way of trying to remove the heating effect is to put some heat spreaders in and that's one solution shown here where it, where it kind of calms down the temperature gradient within the device. The other diagram shows you really the variation in gap loss which can become substantive versus gap length and operating frequencies and it's really looking at techniques of, of reducing that modeling and thereby finding new ways to reduce the problem and perhaps look at uh, incorporate new magnetic materials uh, <coughs> in these wound components. Where this is going to, it's going to be embedded in a prototype. So a compact water-cooled uh, DC to choke for a DC to DC converter, interleave choke, I believe, has been developed. Uh, and it's been tested within a very high power DC to DC converter. Uh, this is the sort of unit you could, for example, use to connect a uh, peak power buffer unit onto an uh, electric vehicle bus. So I think that's a reasonable. Is that about right, Mandu? Yeah. A super cap or something. So that's the sort of specification or application you might find these, these technologies in. The other areas I mentioned was looking at trying to understand how the high the DV by DTs, if you like, affect the design synthesis of these wound components. And to start off with, you need to understand what the high frequency behavior is. Uh, because of a higher spectrum the, the device has been exposed to. So we do some work on uh, modeling uh, state-of-the-art wound components, particularly at the higher frequency range, above 10 megahertz, understanding the parasitic capacitance, the inter-turn inter parasitic capacitance, if it turns to uh, case uh, to earth parasitic capacitance, to develop a nested RLC model for them. And you get very good fits for that. But the main important moving forward is actually what's the physical interpretation of those particular uh, elements, i.e., how do I get rid of that particular resonant effect here that I might not like? How do I change the design to do that? What do I have to modify? 
and that's what we're moving forward to. So we've, we've got a test circuit uh, where we're able to subject now uh, test components to very high, well, well-defined dv by dv edges at reasonable uh, power levels. And then we're using that to uh, explore the time domain behavior and the physical interpretation uh, of, the, of the design of the such devices. So moving forward, we're really looking at developing a suite of design tools to feed into uh, the cross-theme de design tool and method uh, theme, which clearly couples into the work that's going on in other elements like converter design. Uh, and it's thermal management. Uh, it's looking at new core structures, new materials. It's looking at loss modeling, thermal modeling, coupled design. And it's also putting together kind of a roadmap to try and understand some of the design rules for um, high DV by DT devices, well, components subject to high DV by DT. The third technology strand within the components theme is gate drive technologies. And clearly very, very important to drive these devices in the most efficiently and most effective way. So we're looking at drive signal optimization for wide band gap devices, particularly high efficiency resonant type energy recovery type gate drives for silicon devices operating at, at several megahertz. And as a exemplar for the, a very demanding exemplar for the technology is a wireless power transfer system, near field wireless power transfer system where you'd operate this perhaps at six to 10 megahertz. So to drive a, obviously a switching stage of that frequency, you need very efficient gate drive. And clearly the, the, work, the initial work founded here found that the actual the gate drive losses were too much, more than the actual gate drive chips could, it, could, it, could actually deal with, the standard gate drive chips could deal with. And so new technology needed to be developed. The other important element is device level monitoring and conditioning to feed into the next stage of looking forward to, forward to the future, if you like, towards uh, state of health prognosis. So the first problem is, can you actually change the switching characteristics of these new devices through gate drive profiling? And can you actually monitor anything at these, these very high frequencies, very high rates of change? Is the noise going to wash out anything you could possibly measure at the gate drive level? So a resonant gate drive has been developed, built, and tested, and it consumes less than two watts at six megahertz switching. That's around about a third of the power consumed compared to manufacturers recommended, if you like, non-resonant drive circuit, the data sheet, if you like, drive circuit. And it's one, one sixth of the power loss predicted by published information. And that shows it working, and you get nice little, I guess all this is showing, you get nice little resonant peaks that involves transferring the energy from the gate to a storage component and back again. This is taken forward to, to, to this wireless power transfer demonstrator, uh, which is a six megahertz class E inverter, which so far has achieved 700 watts of wireless, wireless transmission. Uh, there's a circuit, there's it doing its stuff, and that's going to be the integrated implementation of, of, the, of that particular demonstrator. <coughs> I should have mentioned perhaps at the beginning one of the key elements of what we're trying to achieve with the components themes is take these individual technologies and clearly put them into proof of concepts demonstrators where we show how, how they would be exploited. And that clearly feeds on our particular own individual partners, research interests, and collaboration from our, our, our interactions with industry. In terms of future work, device level monitoring via driver function. So we're going to take that concept to our H high voltage DC valve stack uh, and look at the, what we can measure and experiment with validation of measurement and control adaptation in a large scale converter test rig available at one of the partner universities. And I mentioned we look at the gate profiling activities. And what we're going to do there is we're going to take some, early, some other previous EPSRC funded work, which led to a, a custom uh, integrated circuit being made where we can actually profile the gate drive waveforms by adjusting parameters. And that, that was done on a low voltage system, a 40 volt system. And you want to obviously take that to a 600 volt or higher based system. 
So it's a demonstration concept and also then beginning to understand what can we actually measure physically uh, in these very fast switching environments. So they're the top technologies and they feed of course into the other elements of the power electronic centre and one way of them feeding in is through design tools and through operational management across theme activities. So in terms of design tools and method, Chris talked about it just before lunch, two areas we're looking at at the component level is design for electrothermal management. So it's a way of de developing at a component level dynamic electrothermal compact models and also a way of establishing a framework for optimal integrated design. That work has also been taken forward, as Chris alluded to, by a cross-theme project as well. The other area is design for reliability and robustness. That's review of where we are, is looking at FEA stress models, is, is identifying fast stress analyses, uh, physics of failure lifetime models, and then taking that and implementing it in a, in a design tool. This shows you perhaps a, an, an approach to the uh, integrated electrothermal analysis. It's an iterative process where you've got, we've seen other examples of that today already, where you've got various uh, electrical circuit models, you've got thermal models, you've got loss models, and you try and put them together into a system where you can model accurately the whole, whole layout of multiple components sharing a common heatsink, for example. Lifetime models, so a, a substantial review of that mostly based on experimental data that have been undertaken, the models have been identified, wire bonds again, soldering, capacitors, they're, they're nasty things as well that tend to fail. So there are various forms of modeling. Uh, Barry talked about insulation aging in electrical machines, though it's clearly equally applicable to work on wire components. So it's taking the, these models and bringing them forward into, into a design tool. Yeah, an example is a of a, here is some work we've been done on a simplified solder joint stress model, leading from complex numerical 3D FEAs to a, a more manageable, I guess, in terms of a wider design synthesis problem, uh, <coughs> damage calculation algorithm, by fitting a well-known algorithm to the uh, FEA from a detailed analysis results. Future work taking that electrothermal management forward, demonstrate methodologies, include wound component elements of it, embed models with an optimized, multi-objective optimization framework, uh, and, and, do some, and demonstrate that on some form of platform. As I mentioned, that feeds in, or is complemented by, by that cross, cross theme proposal, funding proposal. And, and the other element, as you saw the models, taking that forward and again taking that forward into some form of optimization framework. The last of the themes within the component package is operational management and this is all about at the local level trying to understand failure and seeing and conditioning modern monitoring. And the main focus here has been on silicon carbine devices. So first of all, it's looking at the electrical thermal parameters that you can sense uh, for, that will pick up mechanical degradation under power cycling. Then to take those potential ways of detecting flaws or, fe or future failures and look at the ones that can actually be sensed sensibly. Uh, Practically, I should say. If we can find a way that can be sensed practically, demonstrate it through some sort of, sort of gate-based gate or closely coupled sensing circuit, and then take that forward and demonstrate that on a particular uh, example, exemplar. So the, the, the graph show perhaps some degradation uh, at different temperatures, of various devices and the test setup. This um, table looks at some of the temperature sensitive electrical parameters that may be looked at. Body diode forward voltage, for example. On state drop voltage of a power device, threshold voltage. Miller capacitance. 
uh, turn on and turn off times and gate current. And all their pluses and minuses, uh, and many of them unfortunately, as you probably see from this, this uh, disadvantage side, are either don't have the sensitivity you want or are difficult to measure. But in that mix, there are things that can be done, and this is what we're exploring in this particular work package. To complement that, work has been ongoing on firm and mechanical failure of silicon carbide devices under power, power cycling to develop some of that reliability information that can feed into the prognosis systems. And in future work, we're taking that forward to look at online condition monitoring strategies applicable to the new devices, new wideband gap devices. Identifying the best approach, uh, put, identifying a condition monitoring strategy, characterizing the particular parameter that you're identifying, and try and demonstrate this in some form of condition monitoring example. Just to round off, we're two years in, it's quite frightening really, but I think we formally started on the 1st of July, two years ago, all right? So we're two years in, but lots of positives. We've got a team of eight PDRAs, four PhDs, eight academics working on this particular, 20 researchers working on this particular theme. We've generated 16 deliverables, and I'm far aware of, and I'm sure there's more out there, at least 10 journal and conference publications have arisen from the work. So that's, I think that's a reasonable output, bearing in mind the impetus of getting started. And obviously we'll hope that this will accelerate for the following two years, and we're sure it will accelerate. I just wanted to round, wrap up, as it were, by kind of our mission statement, which was what we put together when we wrote the proposal. So it's down there. So it's to devise, model, and demonstrate new methods of device control, new power module and assembly technologies, compact passive components, integrated filters, that are compatible, the engineering of these new power semiconductor devices that are emerging on the market. And a big focus will be a reliable switch unit. How do we improve reliability through design, but also through active management and prognosis?